I'd like to thank Best Buy for sponsoring this video and sending over the brand new 2023 Lenovo Yoga Book 9i. Now in this video, we're not only going to unbox it, but we're going to walk through the performance benchmarks, usability, color gamut range, and everything you need to know about the Yoga Book 9i. With Windows 11 pre-installed, you get apps like ClipChamp and Microsoft OneDrive, so as soon as you open the laptop, you're ready to go. Now this laptop is unique. Two screens, one keyboard that is attachable in multiple different ways. And this laptop also comes with a really nifty stand which allows you to configure it and set it up in multiple different ways. So to me, this is the ultimate on the go creator and artist laptop and productivity laptop. This laptop does something that a lot of manufacturers have been struggling to do over the past few years. And that is taking the tablet experience but giving this a laptop or desktop operating system, which is ultimately way more advantageous for the apps you might need. Recently, I reviewed a Chromebook, and the problem with the Chromebook is you couldn't download all the necessary creator apps that you needed. And so you were left with a really half-baked experience, even though you had a great price on the device. And so this laptop, though it's not you know necessarily the most budget-friendly laptop, I'll put links in the description below, if you're curious about the exact pricing, and of course, if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. This laptop is really ties together all of the things you need for an on-the-go battle station, so to speak. Here is a mouse that this model that I have comes with. I'm gonna go slide the battery in later. And next up on the agenda, we're gonna pull this out of the packaging. And there is the laptop. So we got anything else in here? I don't think there's anything else in there. Wow, that is a beautiful package. Look at that. And there's the laptop we are about to take a look at. Dual screen setup. You have the Bowers and Wilkins speaker in the middle. So it takes all that I love about the Yoga 9i and brings it into this dual screen setup. Man, I just, this is a productivity mastermind. You never have to add an additional screen. You always have those two screens. You don't have that clunkiness of bringing along a second monitor. Your second monitor is always connected. And you can even just bring this setup and you can make a keyboard appear. It's just absolutely incredible. Man, I can't wait to get this out of the box. I know that packaging is not everything, but this packaging is truly beautiful. I'm just gonna set that there so we can look at that. All right. Let's go ahead and check out the charger block size. For on-the-go laptops, you want a simplified on-the-go charger, and that's exactly what I was hoping for. This comes with a 16 watt hour charger block, which will be great for the low TDP CPU from Intel inside of this laptop. All right, so there is the laptop. That is two screens right there. I'm not even, I'm, 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 keep, I'm holding back on you. I'm gonna get the accessories out first, but look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so small. All right. Here is our pen, it looks like, and our instruction manual. All right, there's our pen. We got instructions. <clears throat> so it comes with the pen. So there is your pen. I like the size of it. It's not one of those little thin chintzy stylus. It's actually a really nice pen that you can get your fingers around and have a nice grip on. It comes with not a double A, not a triple A, but a quadruple A battery. You've seen it here first. You got everything you need. So you don't gotta worry about finding a quadruple A battery, but when you run out of power, you're definitely gonna wanna find one to replace it. All right, so we have two more packages here. This says keyboard. I'm not sure what this is. This must be the stand. Let's start with the stand first. Yeah, there it is. There's the yoga stand. Ah, oh, this thing is amazing. All right, so this thing has so much flexibility. This is probably the one laptop where I've actually needed the instruction manual. So you can actually fold it like that. And then, yeah. Isn't that so cool? So you can set it up like this, you can set it up like this. And the amazing thing about it is it's so sturdy. There's so many stands that are this material that kind of just flop over. I have an Asus external monitor and the stand that it comes with is just really flimsy and chintzy. This thing is very secure. It's very strong so far. And so I really like it. Now your keyboard actually attaches down here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and get this keyboard out. So we go we pop this in here, bam, and it just magnets right in place. So now right there you have your traditional laptop setup.
bam. Kind of like a tablet, laptop. It's got a full keyboard. I'm like getting into the keyboard before I've even looked at the laptop, but it's right here. All right, so you have a full keyboard with a full size shift key. Yes, a full size backspace key, enter key. You have even a set of function keys along the top. Nice space bar, full size shift key on the left side. These arrow keys are nice. Personally, if they were full size, it'd be even better, but I really prefer the full size shift key as opposed to giving me full size arrow keys. And let's see. It has a nice kind of satisfying clickiness to it. It's not so much as a gaming laptop. It's not a quiet, thin and light, soft press ultra book. It's a snappy, it's responsive. It has a very nice keyboard. Now this is more of a plastic material for the keycaps, very traditional of the yoga series, um, but it's very responsive and it feels very nice under my fingers. Uh, and it feels light. It's very light. Uh, it's a very thin uh, and light plastic material. So this is a plastic keyboard. Um, and I'm pretty positive that the body is an aluminum chassis because it has a nice little bit of weight to it. This is my first look at the Lenovo Yoga Book 9. And I must say, I'm very excited. Man. Look at that. Now checking out the bottom of the chassis, you can see we have ventilation on both sides. It looks a lot like a laptop from the bottom, but as you open up this laptop, you will reveal two screens. Two screens are always with you. And you say, well, where's the keyboard if that's a laptop? Well, the keyboard can attach right along the bottom here, or you can set the keyboard on the screen and it magnets to your screen to give you access to this screen as well as your full size screen. You can mix and match do whatever you would like for this laptop. The coolest thing about the Lenovo Yoga Book 9 is it comes with this really, really handy stand. Now right there, you can see I set up both of my screens. I can magnet my keyboard to the stand and I have two screens up. So immediately, one of my favorite things about this is the posture. Like. You can, you don't have to hunch over anymore to be looking at your laptop screen. You can keep good posture. Your eyes are almost directly aligned with it. Um, you could even set this up on maybe a little bit of a higher desk. My desk is a little bit lower, so maybe a little higher desk. And you would eliminate that bad neck pain, your bad posture for your shoulders. I mean, the yoga book solves so many problems. And of course, you got Bowers and Wilkins speakers right there, so great audio experience. Oh my word, I, I just, I haven't even turned the laptop on yet and I'm just seeing so many amazing benefits to this dual screen setup and the stand that it comes with. All right, let's keep looking at the build quality of this laptop since I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself, but gosh, I'm excited about this thing. Okay, so all aluminum chassis put together so well. I mean, the assembly is great. Lenovo, what they are doing with their laptops over the past two years is incredible. They are upping their game from a quality design standpoint and performance. Right now, if I'm going to be honest, they are, are leading the pack in my mind for laptops. Now, Asus is definitely a close second uh, from an innovation standpoint, but man, Lenovo is hitting the nail on the head from all standpoints for me personally. Now, the next thing I'm going to look at is the ports. Now, this is a thin and light laptop I don't even know what to call it, a laptop, a tablet laptop, that's lame, we're not gonna use that, but we just threw it out there. We have a USB type C on the left side panel, and we have two USB type C's on the right side panel, as well as a manual cutoff switch for the webcam, and a power button. Now, I love the placement of this power button. The reason being is I have an Asus ZenBook, and whenever I go to move it, I usually grab it right about here, and I go to pull it and move it around. The issue with that ZenBook is the power button is usually right where I place my hands. So I'm always shutting off the laptop. I'm never gonna grab my laptop by this edge. It's just, it's weird and uncomfortable. And so I'm never gonna accidentally turn my laptop off when I go to move it. Simple little design choice, but it makes a huge difference. All right, let's go ahead and get this laptop turned on. While it's turning on, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick screen flex test here. 
very little screen flex for that top screen. As you can tell, let's go ahead and fold this thing flat. The thicker screen is going to be the main base screen. This is where your CPU, your storage, your RAM, all of that is embedded. Now this has 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gig SSD with an i7 processor. Specifically, it comes with the i7-1355U. Now before I go ahead and get the laptop powered on, show you the features, and show you some performance benchmarks from this laptop. Let's go ahead and do a quick open and close test. Now this laptop has a nice firm hinge, so it's not gonna be an open and close one-handed laptop. I am perfectly fine with that. Because of using this stand, I don't want the laptop to be able to open and close very, very easily because I wanna be able to have the laptop screen in whatever position I desire. That is why I'm perfectly fine with a two-handed open and close, and it does it very easily if you hold it securely, but you want that screen to stay in place. Now, here's a quick sample of the webcam so you can see what that looks and sounds like in use. This is the webcam on the Lenovo Yoga Book 9 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. All right, now one thing I wanna point out while getting the laptop turned on is the placement of the USB Type-C ports. You have to use a USB Type-C charger to charge the laptop. And therefore you have to have it placed at either one of the two on the right side panel or the one on the left. I think it's kind of weird that it's like hanging out here above the table because I feel like I could like bump it really easily while I'm working around my laptop. Now, I am assuming this gets incredible battery life, but with that in mind, I wish they had a USB type C port kind of more along the bottom just to give us some options um, because when you go ahead and you take the laptop off the stand and set it down, it's not a problem. It becomes a normal laptop. The charger is nice and consolidated towards the desk. You're not going to have to take risk of bumping it. But while it's up on the stand, it kind of seems like it's a little bit in the way. But as I mentioned, probably going to have a great battery life on this, so it's not too much of a concern. So as you log in for the first time to the laptop, you do have instructions directly on the screen to show you how to operate the virtual keyboard that shows up on the screen. Now, you also have this little paper that's included in case this doesn't show up again for you after you get started and you forget. So basically, you just go ahead and grab all eight fingers and tap, and it adds the keyboard to the bottom screen, as well as the touchpad. So you can see right here, I have my touchpad. I can click right and click left. So let's go here and let's open... Microsoft Edge, that opens up without any issues. I can go ahead and right click and close it down and it's very responsive. And this is actually a haptic feedback trackpad. So as I click, it gives me a little vibration to let me know that yes, you in fact click the trackpad. Now, if you click really hard, you don't really notice that haptic feedback. It's more of the soft touch where you get that satisfying click back. Now, if we wanna go ahead and remove the keyboard and trackpad, you just go ahead and click the X button on the top corner of the keyboard and it eliminates it. Now, if you wanna go ahead and get the virtual trackpad alone, you just tap the screen. And the cool thing is I can move it wherever I want. So I can go ahead and put it over here if I want, if it's more comfortable for me to have the trackpad over here and I can even make it bigger. So this is crazy. I can make the trackpad whatever size I want. If I want a really big trackpad, I can go ahead and make it really, really big. And then that's my trackpad for the computer. Now it, that's obnoxiously big, so let's make it smaller. I think that's probably a comfortable size. I can go ahead and center it right here on the laptop screen, or I can go ahead and pull it over a bit. Honestly, if I'm like comfortably like chilling with my laptop, it might be really nice just to rest my hand on the side and have the trackpad over there, not have it like so centered. So there's a lot of flexibility and customization with this laptop. And also it includes a mouse. So you can go ahead and get your mouse going and that is a very satisfying soft click. It's nice and quiet. It's comfortable. It's not a real ergonomic mouse, but it's a really nice mouse. It has some nice weight to it to be on the go. Now let's talk about using this laptop with the keyboard. It's super easy to pair. You just turn it on, you click connect and you are paired up. Now the weird thing about this is let's say you want to use the keyboard and the trackpad. Now the trackpad's all of a sudden way up here and the keyboard's way down here. Seems odd. So what you can actually do is take the keyboard and place it up at the top of the screen, which automatically pops out your trackpad. And now you have access to the trackpad and you can literally use this whole area for the trackpad. As you can see, if I touch over here, to my mouse moving, if I touch over here, touch in the center, this whole bottom of the screen is officially a trackpad. Now I also have access to the mouse. So if I wanna go ahead and be typing using the mouse, I can do that. I can go ahead and I can switch the keyboard there. So that way I have my keyboard here, my news here, Guardians of the Galaxy, let's go. 
Can't wait for Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Uh, and then also Outlook wants to pop up here. So I can do email, news, and I can have my main screen with my mouse ready to go. This would be a very comfortable use for it because it gives you all the screen real estate on top and along the bottom. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take this to the next level and pop it right onto here. And now I still have my keyboard there or I can go ahead and I can slide my keyboard down here and now I have access to both screens. I have access to my mouse here so I can control the cursor and have the keyboard. The flexibility is amazing. Now let's say I want to go ahead and turn this sideways. I can go ahead and quickly turn it sideways. It automatically and very quickly orients itself to my new setting so I can have some work going on on this screen, work on this screen, whatever I need. And it immediately orients itself so you don't have to like go into the settings, click around, it's just, yeah, I see what you got going on there, I'm gonna follow your lead. We'll be checking out the battery life in just a minute because I really hope it's stellar because this is kind of awkward kind of having this cord hanging out here and you can't do the cord on the other side of the USB-C because then your charger would be, you know, getting in the way of setting it up on your stand. So that'd be like my one complaint so far with the laptop and that's like just about it because we have these beautiful OLED displays, keyboard fits right on, tons of screen real estate, that i7-1355U, and there's so much going on and they send you with the pen and the mouse and just everything is here. Oh, also, they always advertise this pen being teal blue and they sent me a silver one. I want a teal blue one, that would've been so cool. Now the battery life on the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i was good, especially when you think about the fact that you're running two 2.8K OLED displays at all times. Now you can turn the brightness down on each one individually or together. So you can make one dimmer, one brighter as to save battery life, but they will be running. You will be using them. With that in mind, the battery life was not as good as a Yoga Book 9i with one screen, but it still had solid battery life. Now the battery life tests were run with the Lenovo Vantage Center set to battery saver mode, Windows set to battery saver mode, and at 20% screen brightness. The brightness on this laptop is good, coming in at around 300 368 nits. The color gamut range is fantastic with 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI P3. Now the Delta E is probably the most impressive thing of this laptop. That means the accuracy at which the gamut is reproduced. And that came in at 0.77. The keyboard for the Yogabook 9i charges USB-C, whereas the mouse and the pen have batteries. You might want to bring along an extra battery for the pen and the mouse just in case those go dead on the go. However, the keyboard, you can just charge with your normal computer charger or have an extra USB-C cord lying around to charge your keyboard. Now, I really like where they store the pen here on the yoga book. It slides right into the back of the stand, very convenient. Make sure you don't lose any of your pens. I can't, I don't care to tell you how many pens I have lost while reviewing two-in-one laptops. It's, it's, it's numerous. I don't like when they magnet to the computer. Uh, I like when they slide in or there's a dedicated spot in the carrying case. Those are my two favorite ways that pens are stored so you don't lose them. And this one has it stored in the stand, which is a great option. Now let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop and check out the pen's touch sensitivity. As you can see, I draw lightly on the canvas and it has a nice thin line. As I push harder, it thickens up. And one thing I really like about the Yoga Book's hinge is its firmness, its stiffness. It's, it doesn't just drop or flop really easily. So I can fold this almost completely flat. I don't wanna go over flat because then it'll flip the uh, screen inverted. And you can see here, I'm pushing down on the screen. I'm drawing up top here. And at this angle, you can tell it's not pushing the screen down. And so this allows me to really create a lot of flexibility. If I'm going to want to draw up here, I can push on it and it doesn't move. If I want to flatten it out for some reason, if I'm like trying to show, hey, check this out real quick. Let me show you this. I don't know, you might use it like this, you may not. But most importantly, I think the way I prefer it would be down on the bottom screen, put my inspiration up on the top screen. It feels the most secure. However, it does make you kind of look down. So if you're looking to kind of keep your posture really nice, you might want to keep it up here because it helps you, you know, keep your shoulders back, not lean over your screen as much. So I like that flexibility, but it feels most secure down here on the bottom. All right, now let's go ahead and pull the laptop off of the stand and create a nice workflow for shortcuts inside of Photoshop. All right, so now what I can do now is either have the Photoshop dashboard laid down flat on the tabletop or put it up on the screen. I'm gonna keep it flat for now. I can have my hand resting over here for the shortcuts and I can just begin drawing here on the Photoshop file. Let's go ahead and set it to zero. We can even zoom in. Zoom in, zoom out, 
And this really allows me a lot of nice flexibility to be able to access my shortcuts and the keyboard doesn't have to stay right here. I don't have to be over my project. I can just relax, set my keyboard over here. I wanna switch over to my mouse and do something with maybe the settings or check through the internet. I don't wanna you know, like use the pen or have to pull down the keyboard. I can keep everything situated how I want it. That's the really nice flexibility of having a mouse, a pen, a trackpad on the screen if you want, keyboard off, there's so much flexibility to work the way you want to work. So overall, pen touch sensitivity is great, responds really nice in Photoshop, no lagginess, awesome customization for how you wanna use your workflow. Really digging this up. Now let's go ahead and jump into the performance section of this video. This is an area that I had a feeling the performance would not be as good as a laptop without dual screen. The reason being is the processor's having to work to both push information towards two screens. And so for instance, with like the Yoga 9i, you're gonna have a little bit better performance than the Yoga Book. 9i. Now we have an i7-1355U inside of the Yoga Book and of the Yoga 9i standard with a single screen comes with an i7-1360P. So they chose two different processors for these devices. However, we're seeing good performance inside of Geekbench single core and multi-core as well as Cinebench R23 single core and multi-core. It's not like we're seeing a huge dip in performance with this model compared to its sibling, the standard Yoga 9i. Inside of Photoshop, we're seeing a good score, not a great score. It's scoring in the mid 500s. Now this is actually a good score when I think about the fact that the Apple MacBook Pro M1 scored around a 500 as well when it first released. And that is a very popular graphic design, photography, and artist laptop. So this really is on par with a good performing laptop. However, it's not blowing the Photoshop score out of the park with something like the Lenovo Legion Pro 5. That laptop destroys Photoshop. It gets actually double the score of this laptop. Now I wanted to see if we could get more performance out of this laptop by upping the ante with a more powerful charger block. So I went ahead and I switched over to the 140 watt charger block from Lenovo. This is the charger block that comes with this Slim Pro 7. And I was able to get the Photoshop score in the low 700s with a more powerful charger block because it's able to pull more power from the wall and in turn give us a little bit more ceiling inside of Photoshop. So if you're a Photoshop user, this, just disclaimer here, I don't know what it'll necessarily do if you're always using a 140 watt charger block. This is not how Lenovo sent the laptop. So I do not recommend using 140 watt charger block as a you know legal advice, uh, but you could do this to get a little bit more juice out of your laptop. It comes with the 65 watt hour charger and that scored in the mid 500s. With the 140 watt charger block, I was able to get it to around the 700 range. Now on battery power, so go ahead and unplug the laptop from the charger we saw in the 400s. So if you're you know, kind of cruising around just on battery power, you're gonna get less performance out of this laptop. Plug into your 65 watt hour, you're gonna get a bit more performance. Plug into the 140, you can take it up a little bit higher. But again, that is not a recommendation from Lenovo, that's just something I tried. Now taking a look at video editing, this laptop is great for a video editing workflow. You can put your timeline on the bottom, your project up on top, and really have a nice editing flow. The export times were good for 4K. What I do is I take a nine minute 4K clip, put it in the timeline, put some motion graphics and some music on it, and export out at full quality YouTube settings. And this really kind of hit the middle of the, this kind of hit the, and this laptop hit the mid range for other thin and light ultra books. So it's a good export time. This is no Lenovo Legion, like I'm saying, but it does the trick, especially that this is a thin and light ultra book with a low TDP processor. Now in regards to playback, that's one area that we did see some drop frames for 4K. We saw in the mid 300s for drop frames, and that is out of 16,177 in the project. We saw zero drop frames for 1080p. So if you're 1080p video editor, no concerns there. This would not be a 6K video editing laptop. Let's just get that out of the way, making sure you totally understand that. This is gonna be for 1080p and 4K with a really nice, unique workflow with these dual screens. I must say, without too much hype, this laptop is even better than I expected. The flexibility that comes with having a keyboard, a mouse, a pen, a keyboard that is able to occupy itself on the bottom screen with a touchpad connected. You can also go ahead and just tap three fingers and have a touchpad 
wherever you would like it on the bottom screen. So the flexibility of this laptop is truly incredible. The performance and battery life were like a seven to eight out of 10 for me. I wish I would have had a little bit more performance, but I completely understand with the design limitations that they had with this laptop and how much power it takes to run two screens. So for me, that's totally understandable with the flexibility and design that this laptop provides. That I would definitely give a 10 out of 10. They knocked it out of the park with the design and usability of this laptop. Links in the description if you want to check out the live pricing and availability of the Yoga Book 9i. I once again want to thank Best Buy for sponsoring this video. And of course, click or tap the screen here for more Lenovo Yoga Book videos. I'll see you here in the next one.